Hi and welcome to this week's video and in this one we're going to take a look at the Unity high definition render pipeline and how we can add post processing effects to make our games look awesome. Let's have a look. Okay so this is what we're going to be actually taking a look at. I'm just going to press play here and jump into play mode. So this scene uh, is just something uh, I won't say I'm knocked up quickly because I, I kind of really didn't. Um, but these are assets that I made that are available on the Unity asset store. And to be honest, you know, you could drop in any assets here. It doesn't really matter. What we're going to be looking at is the post-processing and how you, you can really add a level of uh, awesomeness to your game to make it stand out. So this is what we're going to be working towards. And in here, you can see we've got nice sky. We've got fog. We've got a little bit of bloom going on. We've got the anti-aliasing. We've got a little bit of color correction. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I put this scene together. Uh, and the post-processing effects I used in the HDRP to make my game look like this. Um, if I turn them off, in fact, I can do that now. So this is without post-processing. Boom. And my cool sky and fog. And this is this is the game as it would be running default, which you know still looks okay. Um, but adding the post-processing really pushes it to the next level. So let's go into the Unity editor and see how I set up the post-processing. Right, so this is our scene. Jump into my scene view here. You can see I've got some of my Mars models. We're on the surface of Mars on our moon moon base, on our Mars base. Uh, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to absolutely remove everything that I've just done, which is kind of sad. Uh, it makes me die a little bit inside. But what I'm going to do is delete my post processing and delete my sky and fog volume. So all I have here is my camera, directional light, which is um, currently on mixed but um, there's no baking direct. I'm thinking I'm just going to do this all real time, actually. Um, and then my art, which is all just 3D models. Um, so let's pretend we're at this stage of our game uh, and we've built up a nice environment and we're walking around, you know, maybe we've got like, enemies and running around, we shoot them and stuff. But, you know, our, our graphics look a little bit flat and a little bit uninteresting, even though, you know, you've probably made some really cool 3D models uh, and they look great. But the post-processing is going to allow us to really push those models to the next level. And it's going to give us an opportunity to uh, have a look at how post-processing works in the HDRP, um, which is something really cool as well. So then, let's get started. First thing we're going to need to do is sort out our sky, because at the moment, our sky is a very blue Earth-like Earth colour, and we want to make this more Martian, um, as we saw in the first part of this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to go down to volume and then sky and fog volume. I'm going to click on that one and then instantly, as if by magic, the scene already looks a little bit better because now we have fog coming in uh, in the distance uh, and it's starting to affect our scene a little bit. But it's still not quite Martian, so we're going to need to change this up. But let's have a look and see what this sky and fog volume is. So on this game object, we have a volume and the mode is set to global, which means it's going to affect the entirety of the scene. Its weight is one and its priority is zero. And we're using a profile and, and the profile is like um, a scriptable object that contains all of our uh, components or overrides for this particular volume. So on this volume, we have a physically based sky which is what we see here, the blue. And we also have our fog and you can toggle these on and off. So let's go and have a look at our first override, which is our physically based sky. We're gonna tweak some of these settings just so we can try and get a more Martian look. Uh, and depending on your game, you might want a different look or actually this sky color might be all right. But for my particular situation, I can go and mess around with this override. So. The first thing I want to try and do is have a look at these artistic overrides. We have color saturation, alpha saturation, and a couple of, a couple of more things. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the horizon tint. Um, because it's Martian, we're going to go a little bit more ready. Really not that red. And um, we're going to want more orange. And you can see it's put like a dusty, dusty look in the distance. Uh, and that's probably all right, actually. Might come a bit reddish. There we go. Uh, and then we can shift that 
so we want to move it up so there we go this is looking more more martian already and it's still a little bit blue at the top so we want to bring our color saturation down a bit and get try and get rid of some of that blue and that's okay that's looking good and then we need to tweak some of these values it's not so strong um and depending on your situation you might want to find some reference of the thing you're looking for but as long as it looks looks right to you and you're happy, then that's the main thing. I'm I'm quite happy with this. It's looking all right. So that's my physically based sky done. Uh, and the next override is the fog. So let's go ahead and look at our fog override. Let's drop this down. Um, my head shouldn't be blocking anything because I've put I put the console window behind me, so I have bumped everything up. So you should see everything about it getting blocked off for my very large brain. So we've got our fog enabled. Our base height is zero, and that's okay. Our maximum height is 50. We could probably do with cranking it up a little bit. Let's maybe take it to like 80. Well, you can't really see anything different. Probably want to bring it in a little bit so we can look at our fog attenuation distance and just reduce that number down. So we make it a bit foggier nearer to us. Maybe a, a little less. There we go. So with that's without and that's with. That looks so cool already. I'm happy with that. That's, that's some good fog. So that's really our sky taken care of. And our fog. And what we're going to have a look now is actually the post-processing. So this has already come a long way. And you can see when we turn it off, you know, what difference. Um, it's already looking way, way more Martian. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to create another volume. And we're going to create a global volume. And we're going to... Recenter this at zero just to keep it all neat. Where's that gone? That's over there. Uh, and you see here the mode is global, so that means it's going to fit everywhere in our scene. And uh, it hasn't got a profile yet, so we're going to go ahead and create one. We're going to click new. And uh, it's generated one here called global volume profile. Um, now we can go ahead and rename this global volume. I'm going to call this uh, post processing. And now we can go ahead and add some overrides to this. So here is really where we can start to go crazy. So let's say, for instance, we want to work on the color. So we go to Add Override, Post Processing, Color Adjustments. And there's a couple of um, overrides we can add here on our post processing. Um, for color, we've got color curves, um, shadows, midtones, and highlights. The first one we're going to look at is color adjustments and specifically the post exposure. I'm going to brighten this up a little bit. Let's try one. And you can see here by changing this value, it's not changing anything in our scene view, but it will be changing something in our game view. So I'm going to drag my game view to the side. This is my scene view, this is my game view. And you can, now you can see the post processing effects um, kicking in. Um, I always thought you could see. Ah, here you go. So on this uh, little button here where it's got the toggle skybox fog and various other effects if you want to see the effect of the post processing in the scene view we can go ahead and mark this give this a tick and turn this on like a noob i forgot you could do that um so let's go back to our scene view because now we can see it in our scene view so make sure you've got the post processing activated here in this little funny icon uh, and then you, we can go ahead and adjust these values whoop, 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 and uh, you can see what it's going to do so I want to brighten this whole thing up a little bit. I reckon a 1.5 on my, on my post exposure is pretty good. Uh, let's bump the contrast just a touch. Maybe let's try a 0.25. Whoa. Probably too much. Yeah, point, point 0.15. And I find that a lot of times with post processing, less is more really you don't want to overdo the values and make it look too too kind of weird and fake let's have a look so we've done our color adjustment so we've got before and after uh, and then we can go ahead let's add another override post processing let's have a look at a vignette we're going to add some black blackness around the edges just really subtle and uh, we're going to go to intensity and there we go just add a little bit of darkness on those edges only really subtle. You can barely even see it, really. But I know it's there, and it makes me happy. And then our next override, our post-processing, is good old Bloom. 
this makes everything awesome instantly. And we're going to turn on the intensity and crank it right up so not so it goes blurry. But maybe let's just try it just so we get a little bit of a little bit of sheen around some of the bright edges. And this will be different values for your your game. And we'll go ahead and see what works well for you. Let's maybe look at the threshold. So let's crank that up a little bit. And that a little bit. Ah, there you see. So the white highlight on there, you can see that getting brighter as I move my slider across. As I learn my threshold, it affects more of more of the scene. Uh, and it looks like a value of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in my case is gonna work quite well. For a little bit of bloom. So far we've got uh, vignette, bloom, and I think we could do with a little bit of ambient occlusion. And we're gonna notice that probably more around these objects, especially on the base here. So I'm going to go to add uh, override and where is ambient occlusion? I can never remember this. Under shadowing? No. Dumbass. Uh, the hell is it? I'll type it in. There we go. Ambient occlusion. Let's just stick it on here. Uh, and then we want to tick on the intensity. And you can see there we've got a little bit. It, you can see it just came on ever so slightly. That's made it brighter. That's weird. Let's make our let's crank our intensity up a little bit, and here we go. Now we can see it really kicking in. And so we just want to make it look like it's sitting on the ground. So uh, let's just be really subtle with this. And let's maybe take it to one. Um, and then we can always adjust our radius. So how much of an effect we want to have. That looks pretty realistic. 0.85 uh, and quality. Um, it's largely dependent on your target for your build, but I'm going to crank mine up to high because that's how I roll. Full resolution? Hell yeah. I want all the resolution. Oh, it won't let me have it. Anyway. So anyway, there's ambient occlusion and you can see it, it really embeds stuff in our scene. Oh, that's a nice bloom right there. Looking good. So now we can run this and on my camera, um, I think with the HDRP, there's a simple camera controller script. Um, that I've added on, it's just, just going to enable me to move around and look around in my scene view and use W, A, S, and D to, to navigate around. And you can see this is looking great. So that you can see how the post processing is really taking it to the next level. Look at the bloom! Look at the bloom! So I would urge you to have a look and experiment with these overrides just to see what you can add. Um, some of the, the tricks I like to use, if, if I don't want my game to look too sharp, um, I, I often add in a, um, a film grain, but be really careful with this effect. Uh, so we can change it. You can see if I crank this up, you can see it goes all kind of no well, noisy and grainy. And but sometimes it can often help you make it look a little, and feel a little bit more cinematic rather than having it too sharp and looking um, too unnatural. But um, I only use really low values with this. Um, let's add another one. Let's go ahead and add in a tone mapping. Um, we'll go for the ACES, which is more of a, like a filmic look. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Right, so we have our post-processing volume, and this volume is global, so it's going to affect the entire scene wherever you go. But what about if... Maybe we wanted to have different effects in different areas, or well, we can do that too. So we can go ahead and let's add in. I'm just going to drop in a model here. A second, bear with me. And uh, let's go to models. I'm going to add in a radio antenna from a pack. I'm just going to stick it here. Now, what about if you wanted the player to come near this object, and maybe it's giving off some kind of like radiation or something? and affect the visuals on the screen. So we can go ahead and we can go and create a volume and make it a box volume. And you can see here, it's gonna create this area, this volume, but when the player goes in, uh, it's gonna affect the visuals on the screen. Because we can add overrides to this, that we can control the way the visuals look. So I'm just gonna make an area around my um, radioactive mast. 
like so. And we're going to need to specify a profile for this volume. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the new and it's going to create a box volume profile. I don't really like the name too much and you can move these about wherever you want to. Let's just say this is our radioactive volume. Oh, radioactive. Okay. Radioactive volume. So then give our game object a name too. Radioactive. Masked. And now we've given this all proper names. We can go ahead and add some overrides to this. Let's say we want to make the screen go red if they go into this radioactive area. Well, we could use a color adjustment. And we could say we want the color filter just put on a red like this. It goes all weird. Woo. You can see it changing as I enter the volume, which is really cool. Um, but I think we might need to change the priority to one. Let's go in and have a look. So it's just going to work when our player or our camera enters the, enters this volume. It should go red, and it does. Ah, oh, cool. So that's awesome. So you can see how like you're running around, and then suddenly you want to change the visuals because maybe our mask is radioactive, and suddenly it's danger. And and this will have a little bit of a fall off, and we can control this, um, using the blend distance on the volume. So let's say we want to increase this to like five. We sh it, it should be a little bit more subtle rather than just like an instant red. Yeah, you can see it starts to get pink to get nearer, like there. And you can have as many of these volumes as you want, like different areas. Maybe like you've got a dark cave. So when you go in the cave, everything gets dark. Or you go in one of these little huts um, and it suddenly turns into doom and you want to change the look on the screen. Then you would add in the volume and tweak it. Let's go ahead and add another override. Maybe we can do like a chromatic aberration and crank the intensity right up. Test that out. You can see, you can see like around here, it starts to get all a bit weird and a little bit surrealish, as if you've been affected by some nasty gamma radiation from, coming from our mask. So that's kind of how profiles work. Um, and I think they're really cool and you can just use these kind of wherever you want in your game just to add different effects in different areas. So just as a recap then for my post-processing, let's go ahead and turn off what I've done. So this is our vanilla scene. Boring. Not interesting. But then the second we add our sky and fog volume, we can start to make it look a whole lot more natural. And then once we add in our post-processing on top of that with all of our overrides, color adjustment, vignettes, bloom, ambient occlusion, let's turn that on. Bam! Instant awesome. Instant triple A. And then if we want different effects in different areas, we can create volumes and turn those on. And, and then we've got this weird, you can do, well, you can do all sorts of this. The world's your oyster. Well, there we are, that's post-processing. I really hope you like the video. Uh, I love everything to do with post-processing just because it's, it feels like a really artistic part of the process. Um, if you've got any questions, then leave them in the comments section below. If you're interested in the assets, they are on the asset store. I do charge a little bit of money for these ones, um, but you can use any assets you want to follow along with and that you can find, just see if you can find some free ones on the asset store. Uh, and if you're interested as well, I do have a Udemy course um, that teaches you all about virtual reality and I'll put a link for that in the description and that's all for unity and giving you an, an introduction to the engine and a little bit of an introduction to C sharp uh, and how to set up a project using virtual reality but if you like this video I'm always doing these kinds of stuff with graphics and VR and AR and unity um, so please feel free to subscribe it'll really help me out and it'd be great to have you on board I've got another unity tutorial coming up next week so I'll see you then Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our physic, phys, 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 <laughs> I'm struggling with that one, physically based sky. Um, I, I love the post-processing side of a project. It really makes it, takes it to another level and gives it this whole kind of, what am I doing? <laughs>